Good morning. My name's Ray. I'm with Team Steam. Today I'm here at Flash Industrial Painting because we're getting ready to get started on this, I don't know, maybe an 06, uh, 379 Peterbilt. And I'll tell you right now, there's probably not another shop in the entire country that's done more 379s than we have. We've got more 379 experience than probably anybody. This one in particular is going underneath the mechanics boom truck bed that we just completed. Now in order to get this truck to match that size of bed, they did quite a few things to it. <clears throat> One thing is they, and this doesn't have anything to do with the bed, they put this sleeper on. This sleeper was never on this truck. When I first saw photos of this truck, uh, when they initially asked me if I was interested in doing it, it didn't have a sleeper on it. You can see they've put one on it. And then they stretched the frame a long ways to perfectly accommodate that bed that we just finished. So that's why I did them both in a row, is because I wanted these guys to be able to put it together and get back on the road. But this morning, first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna take this truck out back here, out, out that door. That's where I do all my sandblasting. There's a sea of black sand out there. I'm gonna take it out that door and I'm gonna sandblast the chassis from the sleeper back. We're not supposed to be painting the rest of the chassis on this one, but they sent paint with the truck that's supposed to match that paint. Um, if, if I saw correctly, it's Sherwin-Williams paint, which is garbage, by the way. But it's what they sent, so that's what I'm going to shoot on the chassis. If, it, if, if any customer ever requests Sherwin-Williams on their truck, I flat turn them down. I will not spray or mess with Sherwin-Williams paint, any of it. House paint, any of it. But they sent it, and it's for a chassis. I can live with that. And it supposedly will match, and if it doesn't, it's not on me. They're the ones that, that supplied the paint. But this morning, I'm going to take this out, sandblast the chassis, bring it back in, get the boys started masking it down, and, uh, and uh, then we can kind of go from there. All right, I just got it sandblasted and got it pulled back in. And uh, now we're going to get the guys on it. And uh, the first thing we're going to do isn't even going to be to mask it. The first thing we're going to do, and we do this with every single truck that comes to me from an auction or from a dealership, any freshly acquired truck, we, go, we take the time to wipe the whole thing down with lacquer thinner. Because the chances are sky high that somebody before this person buffed it all out to get it ready to sell. And when they do that, they use all kinds of products and those products can really screw a paint job up, even through the primer, through everything. But you don't know it until you get the gloss on it. So we don't take that chance. I've, I've already gone that route before. And so we wipe the whole thing down with lacquer thinner, top to bottom. And that's where, that's where we're gonna begin on this one. Now this chassis looks just like it did before. How can you even tell that I sandblasted it? How can an owner tell that I'm not lying? Well, I'll show you. There, for one thing, these, most of these chassis aren't painted. They're, they're powder coated. And that stuff doesn't come off for anything. I mean, you gotta chew on that stuff for a day to get it to come off. And it's not necessary that it does, especially on a chassis like this that isn't gonna be on display. It's going underneath the mechanic bed. So what I wanna make sure that we do is get all the nooks and crannies and make sure that we get it. And the way you can tell I've gotten it is, all that rust is gone, even through around the paint. The stickers that were on the side, except for that one right there, are gone. And that one's all eaten up. But that one that was right there and that one is there on the other side, those are gone, those got blasted off. The uh, rear end, which isn't powder coated, it's painted. You can see it, the effect that sandblasting has on paint versus powder coating. And then another way you can tell is all of these brand new bolts that they put on this stretch chassis are now not shiny gold bolts anymore. They're sandblasted. They're satin looking silver, which means they've been sandblasted. And I got them, even the insides of these, same thing. I got this inside and out. These right here, see how these powder coated, painted, and that came right off. Same with this. That's how you can tell that this got sandblasted. Well, we're burning daylight, better get to it. So now they're getting it all wiped down with thinner, particularly right here. There's a good size dent left behind that was a remnant of somebody doing bad body work. See that in the light? Just a big old dent. That was the front of somebody's supposed repair. Now we've got this weird anomaly. As you can see, it's all damaged on the corner here that I'm gonna have to figure out and do something with. Now here I am at the top of the hood and the hood's open. You might have a better look right there. See how that light is going across all those dents? That's a collection of good size hail dents that either appeared or somebody didn't get fixed. Then you look at the top of the hood here, you see how it's swayed in? 
I'm gonna have to push that back out. And if there's a crack in it right here, I'll have to repair it. I don't see one. Typically these do crack along here pretty commonly. And I repair them with fiberglass and those hold up. And to any truck buffs out there that think they know better, they don't. You think that fiberglass can't repair aluminum, you're wrong. I've been doing it for a quarter century and it works great. I'm just getting everything wiped down with thinner. That's where we're gonna start. And then we're gonna start pulling some parts and getting it masked up. Getting her masked up. Now I'm gonna take a minute and show you the basic steps to plugging a hole in any aluminum, any steel, uh, fiberglass for that matter, but, but mostly this is about aluminum and steel. If you wanna plug a hole in your sleeper, like this hole. This sleeper was never on this truck before. And I don't know what that hole is for, but they wanted it plugged. And then there's two in the back that they want plugged as well. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now here's one of the two in the back of the sleeper. There's the other one. There was work lights right here. And as you can see, I drilled these rivets out. I actually used a die grinder because I couldn't get to them. They were behind the light. And I ground them off until they popped out of there. And then there's the hole left behind. As you can see by the way I'm working the light here, the light shining off the back, this is indented. It's in about an eighth of an inch, and the way that that happens is with one of these. This is a shrinking hammer. You can also use a welding slag hammer. You don't have to go buy one of these. I used a slag hammer for 20 years. But you tap on this with your hammer harder than I am right now. I'm not doing any more because I've already done it. As you can see, I've indented it. I've pushed it in. And if you get close and see, you can see all my individual little hammer marks all the way up through the corner here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fiberglass patch after I rough this all up. I'm gonna rough it all up really well. Then I'm gonna take a fiberglass patch, put it over it. Then I'm gonna grind that flat, not really grind it flat, but sand it so it uh, holds the bodywork after it's all set up and done. I'll sand it. Then I'll do bodywork over the top of it out to about here. And then you'll never see this hole again, ever in the lifetime of the sleeper. And so I intend to do the same thing here. I'm gonna hit this with a shrinking hammer. You don't wanna cave in the whole panel. You just wanna try and cave it in about an eighth of an inch a, an inch or so around it at very most then put a patch on it so it has a good foothold about a, a, to three quarters of an inch or so on all sides then you'll do your body work over the top of that See, there's the lights we pulled off of there now we've got this all prepped and that one prepped as well i just used 24 grit on a two inch die grinder and you can see it's got good cross hatch which is important this whole entire area is prepped and now i'm going to prep just this little corner that i couldn't get to with the die grinder then i'm going to put a patch on this one did the same thing on this one prepped it with 24 grit on a two inch it doesn't have to necessarily be two inch but it helps you get in the tight corners like you saw on the back of the sleeper there good cross hatch on it that's important chewed it all up really well got all the paint off of it now i'm going to put a patch on it then I'll, after that patch is completely cured, I'll sand over the top of the patch to make sure it doesn't stick out too far and, uh, and make it to where you have to hump up your bodywork. You wanna leave everything flat. So then you'll sand the outside of that patch flat a little bit and then you sand the entire area around it with a DA sander and then you do your bodywork. Now here, right on the back of the frame or anywhere in your shop where you've got the space, you just lay out some board you don't care about. This is an old piece of siding off of a house, just a worn out warped old piece of siding. I, lay it out time and time again as you can see through evidence of the uh, previous resin pours on it and uh got just a piece of cardboard of any sort i cut out my four patches because there's the two holes on the back the one on the side i showed you and then there's another one on the roof of the cab itself and this will be the biggest one that one goes on that corner and uh then you mix up your resin according to the uh instructions you're supposed to do like 12 drops per ounce or something like that it all depends on the temperature you're dealing with actually Got my resin all mixed up. Here's what I'm talking about. Spread this out. You don't need to cover the whole surface. You only need to cover the surface as big as the patches you intend to apply. And you get your spreader. Make sure your entire surface is even enough. Put your patches in it. Then do that again. Carefully spread it out. You see how the centers are a little bit darker? That's because it's becoming saturated. Once it's all that same color, you know your entire patch is saturated. There, they're all four completely saturated in resin. Then you bring them over.
you pick out the one that you intend to use. And then you apply it. Try to make sure there's no bubbles in it. Try to make sure that you're not making a bigger mess than you need to. And that's what it looks like completely applied. Now that's only one layer thick and that's all it needs to be. If you're doing a structural repair, you use a lot more layers than that depending on the size of the repair and how much strength is needed. But for one of these repairs, for to plug a hole, it only needs to be one layer thick. That way you don't have it. Otherwise you're just gonna be grinding it all off and making, making yourself itchy anyway. So this way there's hardly anything to be ground off. We can do our body work right over the top of that. This is the biggest one. Same thing, I'm just barely touching it, but I'm doing enough to get the bubbles worked out of it. Keeping it within the confines of what I've prepped. Now that's patched. And just like that, I've got all four of those repairs made. And typically I'll leave that stuff sit for, you only need to leave it sit depending on the temperature and the humidity and how much hardener you've used, 20 minutes or something, but I'll leave them sit for hours or even overnight before I mess with them again. And uh, then you take your, cup that you mixed it up in dump any of the residual out of there and then you can put that and your spreader and your mixing stick wherever you're storing your resin and just keep using the same setup over and over again until the cup is too nasty to use anymore and uh, that way you're not getting all new equipment out every time you do a repair and then when you come around the corner you see this wrinkled up weird spot the other fender was even worse and i've got it all straightened out and beat back into place this has two more of them right here that aren't as bad, but both sides had this for some reason. So here's another look at these dents. You can kind of see them here in the light. These aren't the biggest. These aren't even in the top 10, maybe not even in the top 20 of hail dents I've ever seen or fixed, but they are pretty decent sized. And here, as you can see, there's plenty of them. I got them all marked in black. I found four more back here. So, it's actually 21 and not 17. Here's what they look like after the first coat of mud has been put on and then hacked away with 40 grit. None of this out here counts. This is all gonna get eaten away with the DA sander because this is just the remnants of it. This is what's left. This is what filled the dent. And it pretty much did first try, but then you still have to glaze over it. That's the kind of damage we're talking about on a fender like this. That's what's been done. And this is what has yet to be done. We're just finishing up this side, got these last dents to fill. This is just filler, not glazing. On this side, we don't have nearly as many dents, a few big ones, but not nearly as many. And of course that big mist bodywork spot right there. This is all before, this is first coat and before sanding. All right, so we're all done prepping. I went ahead and sent the boys out. We're done prepping for what I've got to do here today. I'm putting the color sanding primer on the, uh, on the cab in the hood and I'm priming and painting this chassis. And I'm gonna start by getting some uh, dark gray primer, epoxy primer on this chassis. All right, as you can see, I've got my wet sanding primer all over the uh, back of the uh, sleeper, down the side of the sleeper in the spots that it needed it, all over the hood, not covering the hood, but in all the spots that need it. Both fenders are completely covered. All my wet sanding primer is in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the blue on this chassis.
Now here it is the next day after I shot this chassis and got all my wet sanding primer on. It's uh, mid-afternoon the next day. And by now, we should have had this chassis masked up. Most if not all of this sanded, ready to go on to the next step. But because I allowed Sherwin-Williams products into my shoot, into my project, we're put off on productivity by a full day. Because this garbage 2K urethane that they sell, and this is the Martin Senior brand that they sell at Napa. That Martin Senior, that's actually Sherwin-Williams. And that's their primo 2K urethane, meant to compete with all the big boys. But like all of their other products, it's overrated and doesn't compete. This took four coats in some spots to get proper coverage, and today, it's still tacky. You know, I'm used to uh, shooting a chassis like this five, six, seven o'clock at night, coming in at seven o'clock the next morning and masking it right up with my PPG products. But here, this has had a full 24 hours to sit, and it's still tacky. So it cost me a full day of productivity. This, this is one of the many, many reasons I stay away from Sherwin-Williams products. All right, so the boys and I spent yesterday sanding on this and getting it 100% ready to go, taking care of all the little remaining details, getting the uh, air cleaner sanded and that sort of thing. And now today, it's first thing in the morning, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire up my exhaust system and uh, go ahead and get this guy primed and painted. All right, well, got her all primed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get some paint on it. All right, so here we are, it's the next morning. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy unmasked, get it all put back together, and hopefully get it out of here before this big winter storm hits. All right, so we got her all put back together. I sent the boys home. Let's, uh, let's walk around and have a look. All right, so this is a 2007 Peterbilt 379. As you saw, it had a bunch of damage in the top of the hood there. We'll have a look at that. Had a bunch of damage in the other fender, had two or three dents on this fender. The back of the chassis needed painted. The sleeper was off of a different truck and the cab had a lousy paint job on it, like, like almost every truck that ever comes in here. Chassis looks good. Took a number of coats and uh, two days to dry, but it's nice and shiny. If your time is worth nothing, then I guess go ahead and shoot Sherwin-Williams. But if you need to be productive, stay away from it. The back of the cab, full of dents, or the sleeper, like they all are, because they get, you know, rocks thrown up from the wheels. 
No, there's not a single dent in it. A good shine on it. All the many, many runs that were in the rivets aren't there anymore. This fender was badly dented up. There's not a single ding in it. No dents anywhere. No hint that there ever was any dents in it. It looks brand new. Down here was wrinkled up. Same with on the other side. I'm not sure why. This, uh, this was all wrinkled up. That's been straightened out. That's not just body filler. I actually straightened out the metal. And then did the work I needed to do. There was a hole right here. Then we went ahead and filled. We can see absolutely no trace of that. There was two holes in the back of the cab. I can see absolutely no trace of them. And then there was one hole in the top of the uh, roof that's the same way. It looks like there was never any damage ever done. Go ahead and get up on a ladder here. Can't see any evidence of all that hail damage that was right there. It was right there. The roof turned out good. We didn't put the exhaust on it because we don't have the exhaust. The owner took that off before he brought the truck. I didn't put those window visors back on because we don't have a store open today where I can go get double stick tape and I need to retape them. If they're gonna put them back on, that's what they were on with was double stick tape. So I just threw them in the cab. This side was all wrinkled up. I straightened out all the metal and then did the work. Well, all right, looks like we got this one banged out. I'm gonna go ahead and get it pulled outside. The owner can't come get it for four or five days yet. We've got an early 2000s Kenworth that we're gonna go ahead and get in here and get started on. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit the like button. That's gonna help me grow this channel. And if you like this sort of uh, work, this sort of job, this sort of project or art or, or uh, carpentry or gardening or any of the things we do, you might as well go ahead and subscribe because you know, we always got something going on. We'll see you guys around.